I'll just show you uh, one of my sketchbooks. Uh, this was from Venice Car Carnival. Obviously, I kept a diary as well. I think you've seen these in person, haven't you? So be able to sketch people. And this is with the lovely water-soluble pen. It's like the magic painting we used to have when we were children. Um, and what else I've got in here? Oh, here we are, a bit of a building. Just taking little details like that. You may, know, uh, may or may not want to work them up, but to be there to look at that colour and trying to catch that colour is just lovely. Um, this was our favourite bar uh, with a very big bottle of Campari and more diary. But it's a lovely thing to do if we ever go on holiday again. <laughs> Uh, oh dear, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I'll just go through uh, different kinds of pens you can use. So this is a water-soluble. Where are you? That in focus. Uh, there's several different makes. Uh, Faber, Castile make them and various other people. So it says water and fade-proof pigment in ink, and it's just a little felt tip, which is fine. Uh, so that's my water-proof pen. Um, and this is the lovely Rotary Art Pen. I don't know how many people got these, but this is my favourite, as everybody knows. It's an old-fashioned fountain pen. You can just go like that, and it is water-soluble. So this was the um, uh, uh, felt tip, and this is the water-soluble one. And you can get lots of lovely effects with that. I just love it, as everybody knows. Another good pen to sketch with, if you don't have anything fancy, is this um, these V ball this is an 07 there was an 05 I recommended but I can't find any and again that is slightly water soluble initially but then it dries so that will be water soluble I think that's because the ink is still wet but yeah, it's a bit of both this one it's okay you can buy it in Smith's or the shop um, I've got this one the Stadler fine liners which you can generally find all over the place it turns out to be quite water soluble which is quite nice if you can't get hold of the um, uh, the art pen so you get and again you can see the different color ink so you've got a different color ink in that one and then they were marketing these these are a watercolor marker it says Winsor & Newton but basically it's a felt tip and I am really not mad about working with felt tips because I always find the nib a bit too clunky this has got a brush point at the end where you can get finer lines which is quite nice but I'm not mad about it myself, but that is definitely water soluble. So you can see that is bringing up a lot of water. Um, it's uh, there's a great craze for these. I think they're called Poco pens. I don't know if people seen them. Felt tip pens. There's an art group I go to on a Friday, and they're all using them. Uh, um, but I don't like them. Uh, and then uh, someone mentioned uh, um, using kind of. Um, proper dip pen so I've got a rather fancy spanchy dip pen here I think that was a present from my daughter Laura and black quink ink these are lovely but you can you see so you're getting this thin thick line you get a very dynamic line with them but they're a bit of a pain in the neck to take out sketching but they're lovely to use I just wanted to recommend that and of course quink ink is soluble apart from the fact that's still wet it uh, is actually soluble when it's dry as well but it goes into oh all these fantastic colors look at that gosh Whoa. that's because there was a lot of ink on the paper but anytime you're sort of messing around it's a good to just have a play and see what the materials will do for you so meanwhile let's put all that away so my sketching kit would be a pencil and a rubber um, a little set of watercolors I got my big set here because I'm at home so this is just this is the bigger set of the Van Goghs um, and I just like them and they're quite punchy in their colors <coughs> and a pencil and rubber and various pens and I've got a pencil here somewhere right <coughs> so now we're going to get sketching and as I say I'm going to be working a3 but your what you can do is just work a4 uh, sort of A4 sketchbook. This is a C. White's one, which um, has its moments. And these are all sketches just done with the pen, and then I threw water at them later. So, uh, so this is a watercolor sketchbook. This is why I always like watercolor sketchbooks because I like to throw water at my sketches. Seems logical. Right, let's turn that over. Okay, so the first photo I wanted to work from was this one. Uh, people have got it. 
Um, this is what you call a flat plane elevation. I really love this building because it's, you know, it's Venice and it's kind of falling to bits. And this is Venetian red as well. So we're just going to kind of simplify it. I want to show you how to simplify sketching. Um, <clears throat> and this is lovely Carol, who may or may not be coming tomorrow for the sketching thing. I actually did run a sketching tour of Venice and uh, we s ended up here sketching, which was nice. So you just want to be able to simplify things uh, because when you're out in the world, there's so much information coming into your eyeballs, you want to be able to simplify things. So as I say, flat plane elevation, so you're looking straight on in a building. If you get confused by perspective, uh, just and you love the building, just think of it as a flat plane elevation because perspective just makes life more complicated. So here we have this nice square building. I'm probably going to ignore the lampposts and Carol. And I'm going to start sketching with a pencil. Um, so it's basically a square. So if I start here and I go down here, if I'm going to fit it all in. And I'm, I'm pressing quite hard so you can see what I'm doing. But normally I would press much lighter in my own sketchbook. We're coming down here and then we got this. I might pretend there's a canal there. And then we got these buildings over here and a bit of perspective going on. But let's not worry about those. We're just going to concentrate on the facade of this building. So there's that's that roof line. And then I'm going up here. I'm being very loose up here and then we got a tiled roof and a chimney oops that's probably over there a bit more so a chimney oops and if i go like that like that like that okay so i got that i'm going to raise that bottom bit and pretend that's a canal um, and then i'm going to put the windows in so a uh, good way of doing that just so they all marry up is i'm going to just draw straight down here and straight down there uh, how wide is the window? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, probably like that. And then over here, so I'm just looking at the gap. It's not that big, actually. So I'm just going to go down here and down here. Yeah. And then I want to chop them up. So that window's there. This is slightly longer, just so I know what I'm doing. And these two windows do match. So can you see, so I've got a good scaffolding to work on. And what I'm going to do now is actually use my water soluble pen and I'm going to start adding details. So this is your basic sketch and your underdrawing. Uh, <coughs> so this may take a while, but let's go for it. So I'm just going to add my details and I'm just looking at the sort of salient points like the roof and up here. And I'm not going to add too much twiddly bits. I just want to get the basics down. So I'm just looking at the roof. And because I'm using my water soluble pen, I know that it creates a lot of ink when you uh, do it. So I'm, I'm a bit wary of actually putting in these lines because I know that's going to muck up my um, my uh, watercolour when I put it on. So I'm going to be quite spare with using my pen and I'm just putting in my tiles. Yeah, it's kind of a, like a pattern. Oh, and then we've got a chimney. Let's put the chimney in. Uh, chimney, chimney, chimney. And that sort of does that. Uh, and then that does that. Um, and then we got a little angle on the chimney. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to, this is a satellite dish, which I'm not going to put in. Um, and then we've got another line of roof, which actually has a window in it here. And I'm just going to go along there and put that in. And I've got a little window here. Oops, that's probably not that big. And a window here. And again, so I've got this roof here and I want to put some tiles in. Oh, perhaps, but you can't see them. So I'm just going to ignore that and just go along there and it goes to the edge there. <coughs> I'm then going to, uh, you can use a ruler if you want, but I'm going to try and resist. Just go down here, create the edge of my building. And then I'm going to look at these windows in a little bit more detail. Um, so I suppose this is the width with the shutter. And you have to imagine, in fact, if, you've ha if you're having trouble sort of trying to conceive of what's actually happening there, draw it in. So I've got this this window shape here. A window, window, window. 
um, and then we got shutters here and I'm doing this with a pencil so I know what I'm doing so I'm just trying to get the structure right through my underdrawing down here oops and we've got some sort of basket there but I think I'm going to simplify it so nothing wrong with simplifying and then we've got this awning coming out here so then I'm going to go over with my pen and see what I've created and we've got a shutter down here oops and a shutter over here they're really being quite simple with my lines and part of the fact I missed out the space for the awning but never mind and I'm going to simplify the bottom of that now because I've drawn these straight lines here hopefully I can actually uh, put this uh, window below it and I realize I haven't made them tall enough quite easily so I've got this shape here that I'm working to uh, so if we take that there um, and then so we got this little sort of white edge is that right yes that's more or less right of this window down here probably got terrible rising damp okay and then it's got the shape of the the edge of the window which is this white stone and we're coming down there and I got Rue de Saint Pantalon the patron saint of trousers and over here so we've got the same thing going over here but I'm going to start up here trying to get that about the same size and again what I can do is just use my pencil to understand what's happening below the surface so I've got this big window with a balcony there so that's the basic shape and then I have shutters yeah but they have longer shutters and a balcony and shutters here and shutters here and then we have a small awning that sort of sticks out in fact what I'm going to do is draw that first so I don't forget so we come down here so I'm just following the shape of that window and it's basically just to get you uh, familiar with the concept of underdrawing. To draw something perfectly straight away with no problem is very difficult. So you want to be able to give, give yourself that certain um, ability to scribble, to find the, the structure from your underdrawing. So again here we've got a shutter, 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 shutter. And uh, oops, that should be further down shutter 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 and then we got a little balcony just here and then when you start looking you start seeing things so these are always held up with these little almost circular things there we go there and then we got some shadow here so I'm just going to put a bit of ink there I will talk about shading and using the ink to be shadow in a minute uh, <clears throat> but I'm just going to so from there I can just actually add this window I hope so if we call it here, oops, and along here, and down here, and down there, and we'll have a shutter. As I say, I'm ignoring the lamppost and carol, that's too complicated. Because uh, I will do, uh, when I do sketching the park, I'll do people. I'm just looking at the weather, I wonder what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. And then of course you've got all this lovely detail of the uh, the crumbling plaster work. So I'm just going to go down there, make a few little notes, but not very much. And then I want to put my shutters in. There they are, so that's the structure of a shutter, one down the middle, and then they bend round the corner, don't they? But then I'm looking at the light that's falling on these windows here. And what I'm going to do is just shade it a little bit, not too much, because I know this ink is uh, will come up quite a lot. So I'm just looking at the shape of this shadow. So the sun's coming from there, so it's c making this caster shadow here. And you should see I'm doing quite wide cross-hatching, that's called. And then again here, one, two, three, so that will have quite a lot of impact when we put our watercolour on. And then here, I'm going to maybe add a bit of shadow here. So again, just a little bit of cross-hatching. And cross-hatching is just 
I like to do it just all in the same way. Same um, distance. What's happening there? Something. So there's a little bit of shadow on the awning just here and here. Um, and there's a lot of darkness in here. No, actually, we've got a balcony doing something. And we've got some green stuff going on there. But I'm just going to shadow that. I'm not going to put the shadow of the uh, the awnings and the shutters are casting on my uh, surface of my wall because I know that's going to muck up my watercolour a lot. Um, so I'm just going to pretty much leave that. I might put another line in here because this is under shadow a lot and I know that ink will really help. And I'm just going to draw me windows more or less. I'm not going to worry about the complication of the chimney. I might put this building in uh, just because it gives it a little bit more depth. So here I noticed that the building, which I put in earlier, which is wrong, actually starts here and I can go down here uh, and it sort of goes like that, which is complicated. And then we have a roof and we have a thing and then we have a thing. So it just sort of disappears, so that will all be in shadow, so hopefully most of that will disappear. And then we can have a little wiggle, another little wiggle, so I'm just pretending there is a canal there, and there is a canal there. So once you've done that, <coughs> and you can do this when you're just quick sketching outside too, is you find your rubber, which I did have, ah, there it is, so rubber. So what I'm going to do now is just rub out my pencil line, so then I can paint. I'm just hoping that most of this is, the ink is dry. So I'm just going in there and rubbing out my dark pencil lines. Because sometimes you can rub out pencil after you put a watercolour wash on top, but sometimes uh, you can't. So just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to rub all that out. So imagine we were standing there in Venice sketching the scene. And one thing I'd really like to do... Um, is catch all this lovely texture on the plaster work here. But I do want to indicate what the weather was like and stuff like that. So now we're going to lurch into doing a little bit of watercolour. So I got my water here. I've got my paints over here. Um, my paints. I wonder if it would be more helpful if that was there. And I do have another little palette which might be useful. Um, yum, 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 yum put that there temporarily. No, nope, let's put that there. Right. Okay, so um, I've got a couple of brushes here. Uh, because I'm working on a bigger scale, I need a bigger brush. So I'm probably going to stick with these two, but I do need that bigger brush uh, just so I can cover the area. But generally, if you're just working A4, something like that will probably be just fine. That's a size yeah, 7. And this is a size 12, I think. So I do want to indicate it was a lovely sunny day uh, because it helps with the memories. So I'm just going to pick up some of my uh, lovely cerulean blue. Cerulean blue. And make a good old wash of it. So I've got quite a lot here. And I just want to see what colour that's going to be. Oh, let's have a look. And I'm just going to quickly just put in my sky which uh, I've gone over the lines but never mind it's just a sketch so I'm just putting that in so lovely sunny day in Venice and then <coughs> I'm going to start uh, thinking about uh, putting in the details of the roof and the shadows so I'm going to use I'm going to try and find the colour of the building. We had a lovely time on Burano. That very colourful um, picture I sent you is actually the small village of Burano, which is like Venice in miniature. And they paint all their colours, um, uh, all their houses, beautiful colours, uh, on city council orders. They have to keep it up. Um, and the idea is that the fishermen can see their home when they come home. So I really want to try and match that colour. So we were standing next to buildings and we could actually match the beautiful colours that they had. So I'm just looking at that. Well, that's not bad. If you've got something called Venetian red, that might work. 
often there is a colour in a paint pot, it's called Venetian red, I think it's just basically rust. Uh, <coughs> so I'm going to call that the colour of the building, do we think that's the colour of the building? Hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, so I'm just going to go in with my wash of this colour and I'm just going to float that on there. And if I'm clever, I could bring some of that ink up, but that's not working. And then the trick is not to mind when the ink smudges everything. So I'm just going to whoa, go over there. And so that is a little bit dark, actually, but that's okay because that bit's in shadow. So I'm going to water this down. And I'm going to come over here and do me chimney. Ooh, oops, that's a bit dark too. So I'm just adding more water. Oops, oops, oops. And remember, this is a sketch. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? It's off the edge of the page. Never mind. Uh, uh, okay, and then I'm going to look at the terracotta roof. And for that, I'm going to use a burnt sienna, probably. Um, because it's terracotta, that is the colour of terracotta, but this burnt sienna is quite brown, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of orange to it as well. And maybe have a bit of yellow ochre knocking around. Ooh, that's a very yellow, yellow ochre, but I'm going to primarily use this, and again, I'm just going to float that on the edge, and you can see, that's why I didn't put the detail of the tiles, you don't want to put every single tile in, but you could have a idea the detail of the tiles in there i think i need a bit more red actually whoa and i'm just going to splooge that around adding different colors so i'm going to pick up a bit of yellow ochre and a little bit more whoa that red now i'm fiddling now um and there we go um, and you can see how the uh, the ink actually does affect the watercolour you put on. But actually, if you put it on, if you actually activate the ink first, it's left to dry, it's actually stuck, so it will stay there. So I can come in here, yeah, let's get a bit of Payne's Grey going on as well, and put that shadow in. Uh, so I'm Payne's Grey, very popular. So it's got this shadow underneath. Whoa. And then I've got another little bit of roof to do there. So again, I'm going to use the combination of my, uh, uh, what did I say, uh, burnt sienna. And then I'm just going to float this on. Ooh, that's a bit lurid. It's not bad, though. Um, I'm going to float that on. And I can add, add sort of detail and texture later, I hope. A bit of that and a bit of that. And basically, it's uh, more or less colouring in. Um, it's, as I say, it's nice with this pen uh, because uh, that will actually add something to it. But I'm just going to leave it like that at the moment. I might add a little bit more texture. Look, I'm fiddling um, just to have an idea. No, 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 that's bad. <coughs> so let's not do that. Uh, <coughs> and then I'm looking at the shadow underneath here. Now, hmm. I'm going to get a bigger brush, but you probably, if you're working A4, you'll probably be fine with a smaller brush. And I'm going to mix up a lot of the uh, kind of uh, the, the colour of the walls, the Venetian red of the walls. So that is that and that. And I'm going to use this is in the Van Gogh. I think it's called Red Matter. Ooh, that'll do. And I'm just going to go in here with a nice steady hand. Okay, oops, no, I've done it wrong already. I've just got involved with my painting and I've forgotten that there's this nice bit here of exposed brick, which is one of the nice things about this uh, building is the crumminess of it all. So I'm going to go along here ooh, and think about adding this texture trouble is you get so involved with painting you forget what's going on so I'm looking at this so it's got bits that uh, I suppose the salts have leached out of the plaster I suppose I think I don't know I'm not sure so what you can do is I could use a bit of dry brush to indicate texture 
here. So dry brush is just when you're, uh, so you paint away and then uh, the paint has disappeared onto the paper. And when you do that, you can get this nice broken feel. So I just want to go down here. You can see, so it's just picking up the edge of the paper. Um, and I want to have that quite dark just here. Uh, so I'm trying to create a little bit of texture here. Oh, I think that worked well. And look, there's uh, all sorts of weird things happening there, which is nice. Um, so I'm just going to mix up uh, some of the terracotta colour and uh, some red, I think. Woo! Crumbs. I might put a little bit of that over here to indicate how the plaster is working. When we were in... Um, in Venice sketching away I had lovely Annalise Clark with me and she uh, spent three hours drawing the peeling paint on a doorway at some church and then she was she got rather uh, sort of fed up when someone just came up and took a picture and went snap <laughs> and she just spent three hours doing it but actually contemplating it and being there being able to do it at the time you remember much more, more than just working from a photograph this has gone a bit pink I'm just going to change the colour a little bit and then we've got all sorts of nice dry brush. So what's going on there? Right, let's have a little bit up there and up there. So I want to have the idea of that, uh, the sort of the plaster disappearing through age and neglect. So I'm not uh, being fiendishly accurate, but actually to be there and actually sketch it, um, you could probably have a little bit more time to do it. Often when you're sketching outside or painting outside, it's all such an emergency. You have to develop your own shorthand to be able to cope with all that. And then actually through doing a sketchbook, you can find nice techniques that you really enjoy and really work. Uh, so here we've got some shadow going under here and you can see it's just picking up that ink I put there as the shadow backwards and forwards being quite quick so dry brush I think I'll leave that but I think I might like to pick up something here oh that's all some funny color let's try that down here Ooh. and while things are still wet with watercolor you can do an awful lot with it I might go up there. So you can see that sort of dry brush. Yeah. And here I am fiddling with watercolours, which I always tell you not to do. Um, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that to add a bit of beef to that one. And then here I've got this nice uh, sort of yellow ochre brickwork. So I'm going to mix up a wash of yellow ochre. And I'm going to see what colour that is. And I think it wanted paler, so I'm going to add some more water. So over here, I'm just going to add a little bit of that yellow ochre for that nice pale brickwork. And over here. <coughs> so you could get really engrossed with what's happening there. But uh, when sketching, you have to develop this visual shorthand that will allow you to sketch something and then move on. And then if you do want to develop it, use your sketch and a photograph as a reference. Um, so I've got a little bit of texture here, and I'm not going to worry about each individual brick. For life is too short. But I've got some quite nice effects there. So by doing something quick, you get things that you didn't plan, which is always good in art and watercolour particularly. Uh, so I'm just coming down here. Oops, that's probably a bit much. So I'm just going to add some water to that and hopes it does something interesting. And then uh, we're coming down to this lovely bit of um, uh, plaster work that's fallen off. <laughs> so I'm just going to have a little bit of yellow ochre here and there not worried about the accuracy hugely but I want to get the idea of texture so you've got texture there and then I'm going to find my nice color my Venetian red and just go in there 
with that and see what happens. Ooh, what happens? And I think that's a little bit dark, so I'm just going to add some water and then pull that around. Yeah. Pull it around, pull it around. Ooh. And then down here, uh, so a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of the deep red, which would be uh, cra as it is in crimson. If you don't have this set of paints, this is a uh, red matter, I think. And you can see how the uh, yellow oak has reacted. Here it's dry, but there it's gone nice and peculiar. So it's a really good way of finding out te new techniques, is sketching, and new techniques that work. Uh, and ooh, 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 that's a lovely red down there. Let's get that lovely red in. Uh, and I'm just a little bit more yellow ochre around here. Cover up a multitude of sins. So you're getting really nice take uh, sort of spluginess, and I've added water, I've taken away some wash, added more wash, added more water, and you're getting this really nice effect that actually has almost the uh, uh, feeling of plaster peeling off. In fact, I could go a little bit crazy and just dab it with a kitchen towel. Woo, 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 woo. To add a little bit more going on. Oh, there we go, that worked. Right. Um, so I just want to adjust the tones a bit. I'd like something dark here um, just to put it in context. And uh, often putting the dark in, if I could figure out what I did with my brush. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, <coughs> By putting the dark in, you can often uh, make the light seem lighter. So it's pretty much yellow ochre, that building. So I'm mixing up a lot of yellow ochre. And I suppose I'm putting it here. I think that's a bit dark. So I'm just going to add water to that. And you can see that the ink is spreading there. Uh, and then that is a lot of yellow ochre over here. And here, you, you can see the kind of the reflected light. So I'm just, with a big brush, you can do a lot. So I'm, that's kind of mushing into the background, but I did want something there rather than have it against stark white. And when that's dry, I can go back in and add some shadow, I hope. I'm going to bring that down a bit. Okay. <coughs> Um, so I'm just going to put a bit of canal in because I can't resist it. So I'm just going to mix up. I'm going to have a bit of cerulean, I think. And because I do have, where's it gone? Another photograph of lovely Carol. I've got a slightly, um, I didn't send you this one, unfortunately. I've got a slightly uh, better photograph with a bit of canal. So I'm going to put that bit of canal in. So this is all dark. But it's this beautiful greeny, turquoisey colour, which I just can't resist. I'm going to add a bit of yellow ochre to that, and I'm just going to be like the canal. Just to get the feeling, oh, we're in Venice. And then I could have a bit of darkness here. And you can see, so I'm keeping the brush strokes sideways, because you don't want water going uphill. And I'm just going to add a bit of that and a little bit more yellow ochre I think because that's sort of here and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the red as well I'm going to throw that in uh, am I? yeah go on whoa 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 and the nice thing about sketching is I'm making you do it really fast aren't I? so you're not having time to think which I'm always in favour of um, <coughs> So I'm just going to pick up, I'm going to try and make that a little bit more intense down there. So I'm just picking up some red and a bit of that. And I just want to be, that's where it's damp. And again, a bit of dry brush. And a little bit of water on top. Let's see what that does. So that's softening the edge and hopefully it will make some interesting patterns when it's dry. Okay, so one of these windows I'm just going to paint with water so you can see how the paint reacts to the lovely fine art pen. So I'm just, and then I could actually put the wash on top. So I'm going to just experiment. So I'm just, oops, and that's wet, but never mind. Uh, I'm just going to paint that. You can see, oh, perhaps I should have put more on. I'm just putting the shadow of my awning in 
and then we got a little shadow under here so as you can see that's picked up quite a lot of ink uh, but what you can do um, is I'm going to wait for that to dry and then go back and show you that once you've activated the ink it will sit there uh, <coughs> so uh, for this one I'm actually going to use uh, watercolors on top of that ink so I've got a little Payne's grey knocking around here which I do like I will use it again um, so I want to just make that dark to highlight the awning really and then we've got some greenery going on here Ooh, da, 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 da. I don't want to make it completely dark because there is some interest in there. I think there's a door so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of brown and pop that in Ooh, that's nice Ooh, you see I didn't know that was going to happen and it did and it's very nice and then I'm going to try and mix up this typical green of uh, these lovely shutters uh, and that's not quite right so I'm going to use my Viridian I think which has got this blue tinge to it and that's still a bit too light so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of Payne's Grey yeah, a little bit more oh I think that might do do we think that's the right colour? I'm just going to test it yeah that's pretty good but I'm actually going to mix up some more because I know I'm going to run out of it pretty quick because I've got a lot of shutters to do so here we are and then a little bit of Payne's Grey and then, oh cunning ploy, I wanted to bring this to your attention when you have a square shape where's my square brush? use a square brush! Um, yeah, don't say it's disappeared that was a really nice brush. I might have. Oh, here it is. So often you get in your kit a square brush like this. So if you've got a square shape like a shutter, use a square brush. Ooh, and that's not dark enough. So I'm going to have to mix up some more colour. A little bit more Payne's grey, a little bit more of the green. And I can actually go in there with a nice square brush and paint a square shutter um, and I think that's probably still not enough so I'm going to mix up some more and let's do the other shutter although that is a bit more tricky because it's got this awning in the way there we are Ta -da. and then <coughs> as I'm here with this colour on my brush I might as well paint these shutters too ah. Oops. Okay. And then I've got my awning, which is a slightly, it's kind of a bluey green, I think. So I'm going to use that, as I happen to have it knocking around. I'm going to have a little bit of cerulean blue with the green. Test it on my piece of paper. That's too dark. So I'm just going to dilute it a bit more. Ah, so let's do this one. And you can see those that pen I put there earlier has created some shadow although I don't think it's dark enough and that's not that's too dark uh, so what I can do is actually lift off the wash so I'm drying my brush and I'm going to lift off that wash oops I'm fiddling don't fiddle uh, to get that idea and then uh, I think once that's dry I'm going to put another shadow in there so here we have this nice uh, building with a bit of greenery on its um, porch as it were so I'm just going to pick up a bit of sap green dot that on and I probably want to go a little bit darker than that so I'm going to add sap green to I think that's sepia what color is that? Ooh, that's an odd color I've just made uh, let's have a bit of that so I just want a bit of shadow in here and I'm just indicating that yes those are plants in three dimensions I'm just going to soften that edge. Uh, <clears throat> and then we got the shadow cast by this uh, elaborate balcony. Um, so actually, first things first, I'm going to just have a little bit of yellow ochre going on. And I'm just going to go over this. Oh, can't find it's green. Never mind. Uh, over here and over here. So that's not in bright sun-ish. Uh, actually, that ended up rather green. Never mind. Uh, so I'm going to look at the shape of the shadow that this uh, balcony is creating and I'm just going to mix up a wash of Payne's Grey, I think. 
probably. And I'm just going to look at that shadow. So it's here. Ah, that's entirely too dark. It's there. And it's coming over that way. So this awning is throwing that shadow. Ah, that's not dark enough. And then it squiggles around with some things like that. And what I'm noticing is that's not dark enough. So I'm just going to go in and just add a little bit more Payne's Grey to that to make it recede a bit more. And then just softening that edge. So I put a wash on top of a wash, but I'm just softening that edge with a little bit of water. Now we've got this one over here. And I've already put down, uh, I've already wetted, wet that ink. Um, but it, it should now be stable, says she, hopefully. So I'm just going to mix, uh, find that colour of the awning that I had earlier. And I'm going to put that on. And you can see that ink, once it's down, it's down. It won't move again. So that's quite a nifty trick, especially when I'm persecuting everybody using these damp pens. Uh, so that works quite well. But I want a little bit more shadow there. So again, just to intensify it a bit, a little bit of Payne's Grey. And if you could have done it with pen uh, and the ink when you actually add it. But I want that to be that little bit darker. Apart from that, that's all wet, but never mind. So over here as well. So there's a quite an intense shadow that's just there. And the same applies to um, this area here. So again, I might use my square brush because I'm going to be painting a square shape. So again, I'm just going to take a wash of Payne's Grey. Uh, I'm not going to worry about those bits, but and you can just go in there, go over, yeah, your wash to indicate that shadow. You can see that that immediately starts putting sunshine into your painting because I'm creating these quite deep shadows. And again, I think I need one here. And square brushes are quite good because I can use it on my side, on its side rather, and do that. Oh, sunshine immediately! By having that tonal contrast, you're getting more sunshine in your painting. Um, so, so now we've got these little areas here, the, these windows rather, and I am going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to pick up a bit of yellow ochre, and again I'm going to dilute that down a bit I think, and just get, so it's not bright white, they're kind of crummy, ah, green, it's green, I can just drag some, uh, a pale wash of yellow ochre around there and I'm going to dab it a bit just to give it a bit of texture and then over here as well uh, again that's a bit on the green side I think my water is green um, do that and then I'm going to pick up uh, I suppose this is kind of a burnt umber color or maybe a bit more sepia this is a nice set, this Van Gogh. It's got good colours and it's got this lovely sepia in it, which I much prefer to burnt umber. So I'm just going to go in there and paint my... I should have got my square brush. My nice, quite nice... And look, I've got a bit of dry brush and I'm going to leave that there because it adds a bit of texture. And I'm going to do that again for this one. There we go. I should have concentrated on adding some dry brush to that one, but never mind. There we are, that's a possible sketch of something in Venice. Um, I've got these windows up here. Again, they're quite... the interior of the window is quite dark, so I'm going to paint uh, Payne's Grey in there and here. And then I just want to darken this area a bit, just to make that sunshine come out of the painting again. <coughs> so again, I'm going to pick up a big brush, but hopefully you won't be working on such a large scale. I'm going to have my Payne's Grey, I think, if I persuade it to work. And I'm just going in here to paint that. And then we've got some water here, I think, if we call that water. Water, 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 water. And that goes there, that goes there, I think, ish, kind of. And you can see that's lifting this colour, that's making it seem more like sunshine. In fact, I think I'm going to take that a little bit higher because I want some more sunshine in my painting. 
Um, I should have quit while I was ahead. And then down here as well. So that's in shadow. I'm just running out of paint spray. Uh, yeah, shadow, 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 shadow. So you can see that by putting the shadows in, you make the sunshine seem brighter. And you could, uh, in the fullness of time, if you were sitting there sketching, I actually got my sketch from here somewhere. Let's look it up. Uh, so I just noticed I'd like a little bit of something going on here. And again, a little bit of dry, dry brush. And in fact, you can add texture once the wash is dry with dry brush. Can you see? So I'm building it up. The brush has got dry. Most of the paint's fallen off it. But I've got a little bit more texture going on there. But I'm not going to fiddle. Uh, <coughs> so I'm just going to get myself a little bit more paint grey. And uh, put the shadows within my uh, shutters down here. And maybe the shadow of whatever the window boxes, whatever they are. So again, a wash of paints grey. Yeah. That's probably too dark. Yeah, I probably do. Um, uh, so you're indicating sunshine by putting the shadows in. There we go. Ta-da! Sunshine. And again, this area here. Ah! That is wet. Oops. And then here, we've got a bit of shadow from a long neglected window box, which I haven't put in, but never mind. And then, eh, eh. So I want something going on here. Just looking at the shape of this shadow. So again, the awning is putting shadow on the shutter. And I'm just going to go down like that. It's putting this shadow in. That gives you sunshine. I think I need to go a bit darker. Right. Well, as a sketch in a sketchbook, I'd probably um, leave it there. And if you wanted to uh, do it, and in fact I did do this. I did the sketch at the time. I had a photograph and I did a painting and I sold it. Uh, so here we have this, um, it's a beautiful house in Venice. This is uh, Tintoretto's house. It was quite a big noise. He was the generation after Titian. Titian was the really big noise. Um, and then there was Tintoretto and someone else fighting like weasels to get these church commissions. And this is his studio, which is really near Madonna del Orto, which he decorated from head to foot. I mean, he just did everything in that church. But I just wanted to show you how to tackle something like this, not necessarily paint it, because I think what we'll do, I'm just going to go through tackling this because I think it's just too complicated to uh, do as such. But it's a lovely building and you might want to do it on your own. Um, I think what we're going to do after after I've shown you about perspective is this uh, rather nice colourful picture from Burano because it's simple and they're just beautiful colours and there's a tiny bit of perspective in here. So this is flat plane elevation, uh, that is, and this is perspective. And there's someone's knickers on the line. Anyway. <laughs> yes, anyway, uh, right, so... Um, so to draw something like this, it's very useful uh, for those people who haven't done perspective before to think about uh, the vanishing point. And I did actually try it out with a ruler earlier, and it doesn't conform to vanishing points, which is often what real life does. But I just want to show you. Um, so we've got this. Uh, if I put it here, can you still see? I put it sort of there. <laughs> out there uh, uh, show you sort of how it works so the principle of vanishing points is uh, and this is also sighting as well for those people who haven't done perspective with me before is that you actually you're looking at these lines here so this line goes like that and then oops I just moved the thing uh, uh, and then the idea is that this line the bottom line will be here and then if you know where your vanishing point is, hopefully, but it's not true, all these things will correspond to it more or less. So this line, for instance, will correspond to this. This line is more or less corresponding to that. And this uh, helps you kind of put your windows and doors in properly. What I'll do, I'll just do a quick sketch. You might want to do it with me of this building, but I'm not going to paint it because it's so complicated. Uh, oh, look, we've got a bit of canal here. 
like that. So the vanishing point of this picture is like there. And all the bottoms and tops of all the windows, all the doors, every little bit will correspond to that vanishing point. And I know it's complicated, but what we also did was something called sighting, which was quite good. Uh, so when you're actually in, uh, in real life, if I was standing there in front of this building, I could actually use my pencil and go, oh, the roof goes like that. I will draw the roof like that. Uh, and oh, the floor goes like that. And I will draw the floor like that. And then your constants will be your verticals. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm wobbling off now. But again, so again, citing when you can't face computing perspective or worrying about vantage points. If you just use citing, that's a way around it. So this goes like that. And that goes like that, that goes like that, and it's changed angles, so it's there. That goes like that, and the bottoms go like this. So you can see, so you're actually creating an illusion of 3D buildings in, in space with perspective. So, uh, on this rather garbled explanation, I will actually draw it up vaguely on a piece of paper other piece of paper but I'm not going to paint it but when if you were there dealing with this building what you could do is get the idea of the perspective and then look at some of the detail here some of the detail here and just sketch that window because they're so beautiful aren't they or this facade here which is terrific it's got all this bit of crumbling past uh, plaster if you really look at it closely you can see it's got one of these I think they got four more so that they pinch from Constantinople uh, they were terrible thieves, the Venetians. They were always pinching things from everywhere. And I had a, a wonderful guidebook that had a chapter that was called Invasion of the Body Snatchers because they went around the Mediterranean pinching everybody. They got uh, St. Mark from Alexander and St. Lucy from Syracuse. Anyway, if I was drawing this, I would take my verticals. Let's see how wide it's going to be like that so that's kind of your constant and then I want to do that sighting thing is it there that sighting thing of taking that angle from that roof and making sure I'm putting it on my drawing so the roof is like that and then I'm going to take the angle from the basement as it were or the, uh, the ground floor and I'm going to do that okay so that's the basic structure of your building and then it kind of goes around the corner here again you could take sighting from here you can see it uh, sighting from there and I could put that there like that so if you don't want to get involved with vanishing points think sighting and it's worth looking up uh, it's old Betty Edwards again the millionaires who uh, first I first came across sighting I'm sure it's been around for a hundred years but um, uh, actually doing sighting is very useful so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend these lines and think my vanishing point is now over there but I know years of experience that that would be that line and then we've got one here for instance this is this line and then we've got this very elaborate first floor and you can see how the angles of those lines are varying and this is how you get this idea of a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional piece of paper is that we're kind of fooling the eye and then you could go in I just realized as soon as I sent it to you that it's hideously complicated, but you could go in and do the similar thing when we did with the windows. So we've got windows there and windows there and windows there. And they correspond to these windows down here, these more elaborate ones with the lovely Venetian arch. And again, so that will correspond to that. So that you can see the pattern of the architect, uh, architecture, can't you? So you've got these windows correspond, those correspond. And then once you start reading architecture, you can actually um, see, um, sort of reproduce, see where the architect was coming from, as it were. Although I wonder if this did have an architect. Uh, <clears throat> so you can actually build this up. And then what I would probably do if I was doing that is just sketch one of these beautiful windows. Uh, in my sketchbook, <clears throat> just so I have the detail of it. I've been there, and I could do it flat plane elevation. I've actually been there, looked at this thing, understood it, <clears throat> and I could actually use a photograph and my sketches to create a thing. So we've got this lovely, I'll um, do that one actually, it's less complicated. So we've got this and that and that, and then this beautiful arch coming down here, <clears throat> and that kind of thing. So perhaps in your spare time, you might like to do this as homework, to just uh, get in your brain how vanishing points work. 
but if the vanishing points is not working for you use sighting okay so now i'm going to paint this lovely bit of brano because the colors are so gorgeous and grab a new piece of paper so if i'm here it is here you can see it can't you ish um so again, I thought I'd try something a little bit different with this. We're going to use the waterproof pen. If people have a waterproof pen about their person, we're going to use a waterproof pen, and then it's going to be pretty much colouring in. Um, <clears throat> so I have the picture. Where's the best place for it? There, I suppose. So I have this picture. And so here, flat plane elevation, flat plane elevation, tiny bit of perspective. So let's go for this. So I'm just going to paint, uh, draw that building in, which I think is rather nice. <laughs> I like those knickers. I think they're rather groovy. Um, and then we got a, sh a shutter here with a kind of windowsill. Uh, so I'm just blocking big areas in. And then, so I suppose about here. Down here. And again, a shutter. So you want those to correspond. So you want to be able to bring these lines down so that the, the, your, um, your depiction of the architecture isn't wonky, mainly. So you want those to match. So that's a flat plane elevation. And we can put the washing in if we so desire. So um, then I'm going to look for where this pink building, uh, where the pink building is. And I can just see it's just about here. And they're very simple, sort of humble fishermen's cottages. Although fiendish tourist trap now. And I'm just seeing where that is there. So this is just below the washing. And again, letting yourself be quite free with your pencil marks and building things up. So here, I don't know, a couple of you might have done this picture already, but I'm just going in there. So I'm building up the building through my underdrawing. And so we've got a big old chimney here. Yeah, comes down here. And down here. Oh, that's probably a bit higher, isn't it? Maybe, maybe, maybe. And again, so <clears throat> I've got this pattern of these windows, so I can draw straight across. And let's go straight across to that. So there's my windows. Oh, look, looks like a little face. And here, so again, those windows will join up here to there. And then I'm thinking about how the windows are constructed. So we've got the shutters open here. So we'll have a window inside there, I think, uh, which is probably like that. And then we have shutters here. And again here, so I want to bring the window in a little bit. Got to fit the shutter in. And so just to take that line down so that you've got those shutters in there. And that one's not so bad. And obviously they filled in this one. Yeah, so there we are. So that's flat plane, flat plane elevation. And then here we've got this lovely yellow oakery building. Oh, we've got a chimney. They're rather complicated chimneys, <clears throat> which is sort of like that. And then from that we've got this V shape of these, again, flat plane elevation yellow ochre buildings in the background. And then we've got this, whatever that is. So again, a bit more yellow ochre. And then here, and we've got a bit of a roof point <clears throat> like that and you can put the tv aerials in if you like but i'm going not going to bother at the moment and then i'm going to uh, see what's happening down here with this lovely blue building so over here i'm just looking um, it's not madly in perspective but slightly but i'm just looking at that angle sorry have i got this in the right place looking at that angle there and seeing where it comes so it's sort of like that so these buildings are joined together. So you've got that little tiny bit of perspective. And then there's something happening here. I think it's the wall to the garden. But let's put that nice blue building in. So there we go. So that's, uh, again, your constants are your verticals. And then here. And then it sort of goes around the corner. There. <coughs> and... Uh, I suppose I could put that one in, but let's not worry about it now. Okay, so I've got some nice foliage over here. Here's a house. I mean, here's a thing and a thing. 
and another thing and then I just want to look at uh, the pitch roof which is not corresponding to perspective but it is an angle that you might want to put in so it's like that again so the pitch roof is here and over here and so this is my vertical I think I made it too steep but never mind and then I've got another building here which I'm not going to worry about and I've got a man in white overalls in front of a white building painting it white <coughs> so that's a bit tricky and then I'm not going to bother about the detail here uh, and then here look that's what that's what went wrong I knew that looked wrong uh, I didn't do the sighting on this little angle here that's just kind of defining the roof what is it wires or there's a wire so that's sort of like that that's what went wrong so this is wrong this is why it's always useful to work in pencil first so in this case I'm going to actually use a waterproof pen just so it doesn't muss up the beautiful colors that I've got there and my waterproof pen is here so this is a, a size 6 waterproof pen you get them in all sorts of different sizes size 6 size 5 that's about uh, the size you want I think you don't I've got a lot of students who often work with uh, 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 which is like drawing with a pin so I always tell them <laughs> get a bigger pen okay so I'm just going to go in here and start defining my building and so by putting the structure in I'm hopefully now I can look at the detail that's going on in this photograph and sort of put it in more or less accurately because I've got the bare bones of an underdrawing here so the idea is I'm going to go in and add ink uh, uh, so this is waterproof and I'm conscious of the time so I might just paint this one uh, so there we are so I can just go in and look oh, it's got a bit of a curve and come down oh look and it's got a thing that does that which I hadn't noticed before and come down and then this comes down here and I don't know if I've told people how to draw a straight line without getting a ruler out if you look where you're going rather than where you've been um, so if you want to draw a straight line from here to here you want to look where you're going it's like driving so you don't look at the road directly beneath your feet you look at it over there so I'm just going to look at that dot and I'm going to take my hand up and draw more or less a straight line so it's just having confidence really uh, um, I would uh, uh, don't get your rulers out when you're uh, doing art because it really does deaden things terribly and I'm just looking oh that's a chimney that comes out a little bit and that goes in a little bit and we've got something here but it's not doing a whole bunch and then we've got our windows to deal with oh let's do the other half of the roof and you can see so it's got this edge to it of the tiles and the edge to it of the tiles and then we have a window so let's put our basic window in first so we've got this weird thing up there what on earth is that right um, and then we're coming down here to a square shape down to their little um, windowsill I suppose and then we have the shutters ah doing that now now I'm going to have to match up with the other shutters so again so I want to put in that window so I'm coming straight down yeah straight down straight down straight down put in my little lintel and I want that to correspond to that and I want to put the shutters in and I want to make sure that's on the same line it's apart from that there's no room for that shutter there never mind okay and that goes there and then we've got a kind of a window in here and then we've got one over here put me little lintel in put me window in and down here yeah oops down there down there down there. Whoa. Um, and then I've got all sorts of things happening here which I'm not entirely sure what they are but I'll just do that I want what I would like to do is put the foliage in and then we've got a palm tree over here so I want to be spiky 
And I don't know if I uh, drew people's attention to the work of Raoul Dufy. I think I drew Ronica's attention to it, and they hope it might inspire. Um, because he did these beautiful paintings with very loose lines, and they're just lovely and joyous. And he more or less painted, uh, drew with a brush, which is nice. Uh, so then I've got this blue building here. Oh, I didn't put the windows in. So, uh, so having done that, and then my windows are going to be a little bit like that. Can you see? So I'm trying to think of where this vanishing point of that building is, which is way over there. But let's not worry about that at the moment. But so those lines um, kind of must correspond to each other. They're not parallel. So I've got my windows there. Apart from that, I made them too big, but never mind. So I can actually just put my little lintel in, hopefully on the right lines, and then have a shutter here. And I've got another little lintel here. And again here. Whoops. And a shutter here. And again, I want that lintel to correspond to that. <laughs> and I think that's just kind of doing that. And this is doing this. I think, I think, I think. Okay. Oh dear. So I walked off a bit there. And it does. Um, I think you can generally tell when a line is slightly off. But just think about vanishing points. Think about sighting if you need to correct things. So I'm just coming down here, along here, there. Ooh, look, a gutter. So I'm just doing that. And with this pen, because it is waterproof, I could actually put some details of these tiles in. I'm not going to go mad and put them all in because that would be like tiling the roof yourself. So I'm just going to go here and catch the ends of them and then I'll have a few little lines here, not all, and then have a few little shapes like this just to indicate texture. And then we've got this building here which I'm going to ignore. And then up here, uh, Looking at that, oh, I've got windows in there which I forgot to put in. And then we have a chimney, oh, crumbs, and a satellite dish. I know, I'll put the satellite dish in. And so we're getting the idea of those uh, nice tiles and the uh, chimneys. And then this is a very flat roof and little tiny things. And uh, if you want to look at people who are quite good at um uh sorry phone <laughs> uh, good at using pen and ink quinton blake obviously wonderful very fresh and again he would use uh, a nib pen which has actually got a much more sensitive line if you want to use a nib pen uh, with a waterproof ink you need indian ink um and it generally says waterproof indian ink on it and that one once down that will stay forever so now it's just pretty much a case of colouring in <laughs> with watercolour, which is always one of my favourite things. So, I was actually mixing up the colour of this house. Oh, actually, I need to rub everything out. So I can rub out all my pencil marks and start painting. But what I loved about this picture was um, just the colours. They're just gorgeous. So I'm just going to mix up a pinky colour. So I might start with a clean palette. No, I won't do it here. Go on. Uh, so I'm just going to mix up my red. And uh, this is a magenta. But if you don't have this, try uh, the reds in your paint box. And you just dilute them a little bit more to get this nice intense pink colour. Um, so again, having a test sheet is always useful. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit more of that pinky colour and dilute it down a bit. And I'm going to colour in. So I'm just going to go on here. Whoa, crumbs. Terrific. Yum, 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 yum. Enjoying this. Uh, so this is, I think, if you don't have this paint gloss that's got this... Um, uh, magenta in it. Uh, Elysian Crimson will probably do. Uh, and over 
here. And actually, is that what, that's actually more intense. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more colour. It gets more intense further down. So again, you can just see I'm colouring in with watercolour, which I suppose is not what you want to do in art necessarily, but it's just to get you ready for sketching, really. So I've got that, and I'm just going to pick up a little bit more just here. Um, and I will paint this chimney very quickly. And I'm running out of paint. Damn, damn, damn. Uh, eh, eh. Let's try that. Da, 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 da. Oops, wrong thing. So I'm just coming down here, getting that colour more intense. So you're just going to be uh, painting uh, uh, within the lines, I hope. Doesn't really matter if you don't. And again, I didn't mix up enough watercolour, so I'm just going to mix up a little bit more. A little bit more magenta. And go. Ah! <laughs> Where did that come from? I'm just going to dilute that and pretend it's weird brickwork. That must have been the, from the paint next door. And you see, so again, this is a good lesson for learning how to use watercolours. And I'm just going to drag that down. And uh, as Bob Ross says, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Oops. And this is the trouble with using a too small a brush and not having, having a, enough wash. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Whoa, look at that magenta. It's lovely. I don't think this uh, Van Gogh set's very expensive. I think it's only about £25, and they're really good paints. I really like them. Okay, so continue on in that theme and uh, start to look. And again, it was actually putting the shadows in. Uh, putting the shadows in, like the shadow of that chimney. That will give you sunshine. The shadow of this shutter, sunshine. And then this is a slightly different tone from that one. I know it's rather a simplified view, but I thought you would enjoy the colours. So uh, another bit of homework for you. <laughs> right, I'm going to cease and desist now and see what you think. <laughs> 